there's no help in sight Seen him when it seemed that life was nothing but night But in the eyes of heaven Something else was going on They may have been all by themselves But they were never I've seen them with tears in their eyes Seen them with their hearts breaking I've seen them tested and tried Seen them with their face shaking But I've never, no, never Seen the righteous forsaken Never I've seen them with tears in their eyes Seen them with their hearts breaking I've seen them tested, seen them tried Seen them with their face shaking But I've never, no, never I've never, no, never No, I've never, no, never Seen the right Just look around at all the smiles on the faces All over the place, there's nowhere better to be Than surrounded by your brothers and sisters What a beautiful picture of God's family Well, it might have been weeks, it might have been years Oh, I'm just glad that you're here Everybody gather round The Father's calling all His children And His glory's coming down It's so good to see ya It's been way too long So glad that you made it Welcome home There's no doubt about it You're where you belong There's always a place here Welcome home There's no doubt about it You're where you belong Good morning. Let's all stand all across the house. We're going to sing an old hymn, Some Glad Morning, When This Life Is O'er, I'll Fly Away. Help us as we sing now. 
some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away say now to a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away oh I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when say amen this morning. You can have a seat all across the house. We're thankful to be opportunity. Uh, the Lord's allowed us to be in church. And if this is your first time being great alive, we want to say thank you for being here. And it's a sure joy that you chose this place to worship with us this morning. And uh, we're looking forward to going to church together, giving God all the praise for what the Lord is worthy to be praised. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, it is uh, Independence Weekend, Liberty Weekend, Freedom Weekend. And uh, we're sure thankful for America and uh, for what I believe is the greatest nation in the whole wide world. Somebody say amen right there. And I realize that she ain't what she should be, but I still believe she's still the best, the best nation. And I'm thankful uh, for America, for our freedom, for our liberty that we have. And uh, I wonder if there's anybody maybe present or past that served in the military. Would you stand all across, all across the church? A present or past served in the military, whatever branch at all. Can we give all these... All these a hand. Yeah. Boy, we're so sure thankful for your service. You can have a seat, guys, if you're going to come. Get the pledges ready. We're fixing to do that. And uh, I'm thankful for America. I'm thankful for what she stands for. And I'm thankful for every man and every woman uh, that have gave a sacrifice to give us the liberty that we have today. And uh, it's a sure joy for us to be here. And, and in the world we live in today, um, there are some that are trying to take the pledges out of our schools and out of our churches and out of off the Internet and all that comes with that. Uh, but I still believe there's something, too, saying a pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And uh, so here's what I'd love for you all to do. I'd love for you all to stand. I'd love to invite you to stand. And we're going to start our pledges this morning. We're going to start uh, with the Christian flag, and uh, then we'll do the Bible, and then we'll do... Uh, the Americans. So would you say it with me? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Now we're going to the Bible. Uh, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Now to the American flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can remain standing, and uh, Michaela's going to come, and she's going to sing our national anthem this morning. Who 
say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, somebody come on, put your hands together, give God praise. Yes. Thankful for America. And, uh, we're going to sing an old hymn. Simply says, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Oh, beautiful.
to ask anybody who'd like to. Uh, we're going to take a moment and just pray for the nation of America. Uh, we believe this. I don't believe that it's too late for God to send revival to America one more time. And regardless of what you may think, I don't believe the solution to America is a Republican president or a Democrat president. I believe the solution to America is God's people getting back on their knees and begging God for revival one more time in America. I don't believe that's an old-fashioned thing. I believe it's still possible to happen today. And for the sake of all these youngins in here, can we all agree to this? If something doesn't change in 10 years from today, there's no telling what they're going to experience when they're standing where we're standing today. I'm looking at a generation where 25 years from now, when some of you were my age, you never thought in a million years you'd see the things you're seeing before your very eyes happening in this generation. It ain't because we can try to point fingers at everybody else, but I believe it's, it, what happened was is the people of God got off their knees, stopped begging God for things, and started doing everything else, and we lost what was the most important value in the family, and that is prayer. And uh, so I'd love to invite all of you that would, choir, you can stay in your seat. Everybody else, if you'd like to come and uh, gather around the altar with me this morning, our pastor's going to come. He's just going to pray, and we're just going to take this time out of our service and just pray for the nation of America. And uh, I'd ask you to pray for our president. I'd ask you to pray for leadership, pray for uh, our governor, pray for our city officials, our leaders, and uh, let's just ask God this morning to touch one more time the nation of America. I don't believe God's done with her yet, and uh, we believe that God could still do it one more time. Let's pray together. Our Father, Lord, this morning, as humble as we know how, God, we bow our heads before you, God, being thankful, Lord, of the place that we're standing God, we're thankful, Lord, for a country, Lord, that we're celebrating 247 years of liberation, God, and freedom. God, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for a country, Lord, where its foundation is this holy Bible, God. And many years ago, men and women, God, came together. And, Lord, I know today, God, as we look at America, there's a lot of blemishes, there's a lot of defects, there's a lot of negativity, God, that we can talk about. But, Lord, for a few minutes, I want to tell you I'm thankful and I'm grateful, God, Lord, that I can call myself a citizen of the United States of America. God, I'm thankful, Lord, for the liberty, Lord, that this morning on the first day of the week, I can begin, Lord, this week at the house of God. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, for the liberty. I can open up the precious word of God on this pulpit, Lord, and proclaim that gospel story that has changed mankind throughout the ages. God, I'm thankful for a country, Lord, that allows me to come and go and do and serve you, Lord, to the fullest of my ability, God, without the fear of what man may do. And God, I pray, Lord, today for our nation. God, Lord, there is bad things. And Lord, the greatest thing that can happen to our nation right now is not an election, it's not a new law, it's not a new Congress, God, but the greatest thing that can happen to our nation is today around the houses of God across our land that God's people would get on their knees. And God, we begin to cry out to a holy God, Lord, and pray for our nation. But Lord, not just bring our petitions to you, God, Lord, but be willing to make the change. Be willing to make the sacrifice. God, be willing to do whatever it may take, God, Lord, to bring a holy inspired revival to our nation. God, we're grateful for our military and the men and the women. God, Lord, that gave their lives to give us the liberty that we physically have. But Lord, more than the physical liberty we have today, we need a spiritual liberation across our land. We need an awakening of the souls of the American people. And God, I pray, Lord, today, it would start right here in this sanctuary. God, I pray, Lord, you place the burden on our hearts, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, you would allow us to be a part in this time, God, to be able to introduce to this generation a holy God, a righteous God, a loving God, a gracious God. And Lord, because all of what you did on Calvary, we're free today, God. Lord, the freedom in my soul, there's no price tag. God, it can be put on it. God, I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful, Lord, for the congregation, for these people, my fellow friends and family, for the Word of God. So I pray, Lord, today that you would use us as a vessel in your hand to be the lighthouse, to be the helping hand in this hour to one of the greatest nations outside of your chosen people. I believe is the greatest nation, Israel and America. God, Lord, to be able to be a part of pointing people to Calvary. Lord, take this, Lord, petition that we've put up to you, Lord, 
answer it according to your will. And God, we're sure are grateful, Lord, for what you did behind us. Faithful, Lord, for what we're celebrating today. And looking forward to what you're going to do tomorrow. And all God's people say, amen, amen. and amen. Well, let's walk around, shake somebody's hand, tell them it's good to see them in church today. Let's fellowship for a little bit. And we're thankful that you're here. be seated. We're grateful that you're here this morning and you can be seated. We're celebrating uh, Freedom Weekend and all that, but we like to do something special this morning, and uh, that is to open up the doors of our church uh, to a very special family who has been coming for quite a while now and uh, been getting plugged in. And uh, they've attended our Next Step class and has made it very evident they want to be a part of the Greater Life family. And I'm going to ask Mr. Brock, if you would, you and your wife and your children, uh, to come forward. Amen. Can we give them a hand? I think this would be a good Sunday to do it with the children in here, don't you? <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is a big man, anyway. <laughs> Intimidating man, anyway. I ain't used to looking up, anyway. But uh, they have been coming for quite a while now and, and uh, have been saved, and uh, I had the privilege of baptizing them and, you know, and all that, and they have made it very, very uh, clear to me that they would love to join the Greater Life family. And uh, so we want to make that uh, formal today, so I wonder... Uh, do I have a, a, a motion in the congregation? I got one back here. I got a second. Uh, amen. All in favor, let it be known by saying amen. 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 We never asked the other question because it really don't matter. Amen. <laughs> and uh, we're glad that they're a part of us. And I want to tell both of you, uh, y'all are very special. And we appreciate your faithfulness and how y'all serve and the things that you do. And uh, we're looking forward to growing together. Uh, we're not a perfect church. We're not, I know you've been right here long enough, you see that. We all got flaws. We all got flaws. But we are a church that together with Christ, we can grow together, serve together. And our greatest goal is to make an impression of Christ on somebody's life. That they may come to know him as a Savior and enjoy the goodness that we're enjoying. So as your pastor, I say welcome to the church family. I love you, Brother Brock. I'm here for you. And all I ask y'all to do is to put up with our flaws we're going to put up with your flaws you got a church that's behind you that's going to love on you support you and pray for you and i ask you to be behind them and love them and support them and pray for them and together we're going to watch god do great things in our baby's lives and we'll grow together amen amen thank y'all let's give him another hand well look to the person on your right and say you look good today Now look to the person on your left and say, you look really good today. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're in church, and uh, let's just have a good time. Let's go to church together. Let's all stand. Ushers are coming, and uh, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering today. If you're a visiting, if you're a guest this morning, we don't ask you to give a dime. You don't have to do that. We just want you to enjoy the service this morning. And uh, our people are very faithful in giving, and we're thankful for the privilege that we have uh, to give to the Lord. He's given so much to us, and we're thankful to be able to give to Him. And uh, let's pray over the offering this morning. Lord, I pray that you take this offering. I do pray that you bless the gift as well as the giver. Help us now as we go forth in this service. In Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people say it. Amen and amen. He set me free. Help us as we sing. 
Once like a bird in prison I dwelled No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God he said All sing will he sing this morning as we sing.
kind of thing that just breaks a man. Breaks him down to his knees. God, I've been broken more than a time or two. Yes, I have. But then he picks me up and he shows me what it means.
mercy and all of his love if the pen of the writer could write every day not even his words they could never contain how I have been blessed well there's war in spring, the laughter of summer, and the changing of the leaves. There's food on my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, and shoes on my feet. I have been blessed. can talk, hands that can touch, and legs that can walk, ears that can listen, and eyes that can see, oh, I've got to praise Him as long as I
until I lay my head. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Mm. All my life you have been so, so So my God's been better to us than what we deserve. And uh, I start thinking about the goodness of God and all that God's done in my life. We'd have to agree that more than we could ever do to Him, He's done to us. And uh, simply, God has been so very good to us. You ready? <clears throat> Lately, I've been looking back along these winding roads. To the old familiar markers 
and the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than I can explain. There's no better way to tell you than to say that God's been good. see when I cry those bitter tears but I felt his arms around me as I face my darkest fears I've had more gains than losses and I've known more joy than hurt as his grace fell all around me undeserved and God's been good. Worship with us. In my life, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through. why I act the way I act, but it's just because God's been so good to me. I have never done one thing to deserve one thing from God. And I could sit here and tell you story after story after story after story, and it would all lead up to one phrase, God's been good in my life. God's been good in my life. He's always stood through it all. Won't you stand all across the church, sing this with us? And God's been good in my Turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 27. While you're turning, I want to make a, give a special date to our church family. Uh, it's that time of the year uh, where we make and uh, give our eternal investment offering. Our eternal investment offering. And uh, we'll be taking that up or receiving that uh, July the 23rd. July the 23rd. And uh, what is that? That's a special offering we take up outside of our tithe and our giving. Uh, the Bible says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. 
It's a special offering we take up and we set that money aside and we take it and we turn around and we invest it in people. We invested in people. We invested in our in our preachers. We invested in our in our uh, GL seniors. We invested in teens. We invested in the community. Just wherever we can invest or need that money uh, to help to make an eternal difference in somebody's life. So I need the church family. You be praying and uh, ask God what we He have you to go above and beyond uh, to give. Last year in July we took up over twenty thousand dollars. Came in for that investment. And, uh, and that was a blessing. So you begin praying on July the 23rd. July the 23rd, uh, we'll receive that offering. Well, we want to wrap up the series of SOS, Save Our Ship from the Sea of Life. Would you agree with me this day that life is like one more raging sea? We started out this, uh, this series out of Acts 27. All of us have been taken out of the Scripture talking about seasons. Seasons in life. You cannot control seasons. Seasons come and seasons go. We're all at a, we would love to go back to our younger years, but let's just say we're at a different season now, and there's nothing we can do. And we found out in Acts 27 that though you have seasons in your life, seasons produce storms. Seasons bring storms. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. We found out in Acts 27 that you got a man of God by the name of Paul who was a prisoner on the ship uh, sailing to Rome. And, and Paul was a faithful man. He's a man that follows God. And Paul is a man who's not got sin in his life. Let me just put it like this. Paul is not a Jonah on this ship. Paul is in the very center of God's will on this ship. And we find out reading Acts 27 that you can be in the perfect center will of God, serving God, pleasing God, and it don't change the fact that storms still come into your life. Last week, Pastor Tyler stood here and he preached not just on seasons and not just on storms, but he preached all that. You know what? Storms will produce shipwrecks in your life. There's many areas you can look back in your life. You may be there now that devastation because of a storm in your life came in your life. And you look around and you ask yourself, what did I do to deserve this? It ain't because you deserve something. It's just because of the season you was in, a storm came. And storms produce shipwrecks. I want you to look down in the latter part of chapter number 27 and Let's look down at verse number 39. The Bible says, And when it was day, they knew not the land. But they discovered a certain creek with a shore, into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loose the rudder bands and hoist up the main sail to the wind and made towards shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. And the fourth part struck fast. It remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. The soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose. It commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Let's pray. Father, I love you. God, I'm thankful to be standing here. And I'm thankful, Lord, for this message you put on my heart. I'm thankful for this series through Acts 27. I'm thankful, Lord, for what you've taught me and what you've showed me through the Scriptures and how you've encouraged me, God. So I pray, Lord, this morning that you'd make preaching easy. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would take full control from the soles of my feet to the crown of my head, God. I pray, Lord, for compassion and wisdom and courage and strength and boldness, God. If you help me, God, be an instrument in your hand. God, Lord, to be a help to your people that you bled for, you died for. God, that you redeemed. God, I pray, Lord, for there's one here this morning that don't know the free pardon of sin. Spirit of God, would you do the work that only you can do. And God, Lord, I ask you, God, may your blessing be upon this service. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people say, amen. 
and they mean you may be seated. Thank you for standing. I want you to look back here by way of introduction. I'm not going to go back on the seasons and the storms and all that. But I want you to look back at verses 39. And right here we'll find out that there's two things in life that you cannot do nothing about. In this chapter right here, we got a thing called the sea. They're in the Mediterranean Sea. And you know well as I know, if you've ever been on a boat out there in the water, when a storm comes up, you ain't going to do nothing about it. You can't command the water. You can't cause the white caps to lay down. You can't stop the wind from blowing. There's two things you cannot control in life. And that is the storm and that is the sea that you're on. How many of you know all it takes is a phone call? And you know what devastation is. All it takes is somebody to tell you something. And it turns your world upside down. You don't go looking for that. You don't ask for it. It's just a part of life and you can't control it. I want you to notice something that in this life, in this sea of life, you cannot control the sea. You cannot control the storms. So why do we put so much emphasis on trying to control our sea and our storms? You start talking to people and, and they'll start telling you all about how their life is going. And how they wish life was different. They talk about the storms they're in and how this is the greatest storm and a dark storm and a raging storm and a violent storm like the Bible tells us. And you know they talk all about the storm and wish the storm never came in. But truth of the matter is this morning, there is not one of you this morning that can change anything that's behind you. The sea of life has brought you to where you are right now. But I want to learn something real quick by way of introduction before I get to the main thought of my message. Is there something that these sailors did? There's something that Paul did. These people that's on this ship is something that they did that you and I need to do. That it take a heavy load off your shoulders. Look what the Bible says down at verse number 40. And when they had taken up the anchors. There's some things you need to let go of. There's just some things you need to let go of. Some of y'all are not fully happy in the Lord today because of some church hurt that happened 45 years ago. You need to take that anchor up. There's some of you in here, you're stuck in this storm and everything else because of a relationship behind you. You need to take that anchor up and let it go. There's some of you here, you got walls so thick and so tall around your life because of things that happen behind you. You won't let nobody in to love on you. You won't let nobody in to minister to you. You won't let nobody in to get close to you because you've got to keep those walls up. But let me tell you something, you can't control life, the sea, or the storm. The Bible says they took up the anchors. Look what they did. Look what they did. They committed they committed themselves unto the what? The sea. They committed themselves unto the sea. In other words, they got to the point where they said there ain't nothing we can do about this storm. There ain't one thing we can do about this storm. We've been trying. We've been trying. We took some cargo off the boat. Man, we put our anchor down. Hey, you know what? We come to find out that this storm and this sea that we're in, it's going to do exactly what it wants to do. So the best thing we can do is take up our anchor and commit ourselves to the sea. The sea this morning being like an application. Your life, my friend. You see, some of you I'll be a whole lot better off if you'll take up them anchors and commit yourself to the life that God has blessed you with. Life may not be painted the way you want it. Life may not be dealing it the way you want it. But you can say what you want to say. That air you're sucking in and you're exhaling, that is a gift from God Almighty above. And we can learn from the sailors this morning. They committed themselves to the sea. Some of y'all need to make a commitment. For lack of better terms, come hell or high water, I'm going to serve God. No matter how much the wind blows, I'm going to serve God. I mean, no matter, no matter the burdens and the troubles and the trials that come, I'm going to serve God. God's brought me this far. God picked me up out of the mire pit of hell. God broke those chains of condemnation. God took away my sin. Put some joy down in my heart. Put some peace down in my heart. Hey, I think we can commit ourselves unto the Lord. Listen, 
Listen, you can't control the sea. You can't control the storm. And you say, preacher, we, uh, we've been hearing this for the last four or five weeks. You know, we talk about the seas. We talk about the storm. We talk about the shipwrecks. But in the middle of all of this, I agree, preacher. I've had shipwrecks. I've had storms in a storm, coming out of a storm. feel like I spent my whole life in a storm. I'm in this season and that season, and I need something that's going to carry me through. I'll tell you the same thing I told you a couple of weeks ago. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of the season, there is a man named Jesus that says, I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. Do you know what that means? It don't matter how dark it gets, Jesus is going to be there. It don't matter how rough it gets, Jesus is going to be there. It don't matter how violent it gets, Jesus is going to be there. You may not control the sea. You can't control the storm. But there is a Savior that will walk right back there through the middle of it all. Somebody ought to praise God that no matter or what I got a savior in the middle of my sea. Listen, listen, you can't control the sea, you can't control the storm, but you sure do have a savior. Ain't you thankful for a savior? I'm glad I'm not counting on how I feel to get me to heaven. I sure am glad I ain't counting on how you look to get me to heaven. I sure am glad I ain't counting on how. I've been living the last few days to get me to heaven. I'm glad it ain't my capabilities or my accomplishments in life that's getting me to heaven. The only thing right now, if I was to take my last dying breath standing behind this sacred podium right here, and I'd drop dead in these shoes, what gets me to heaven is not going to be because somebody called me pastor, not because I preached the gospel. It's because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth not in the Baptist, not in the position, not in the work, but believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting Life. I don't know about you, my friend, but tucked over there in 316 of the great gospel of John, there's a promise from God above that says, hey, you may be going through the sea of life. You may be experiencing the storms of life. You may be experiencing all kind of shipwrecks. But if you've ever trusted my son, if you've ever believed on my son, if you've ever trusted in the blood, if you've ever trusted in Jesus Christ, everything is going to be okay. But it don't change the fact that you can't control the sea, you can't control the storm, and you're all shouting about the Savior. But then you know what happens? A soldier shows up in your life. Look at me in these brown giving eyes. This world don't like you. This world is not supposed to like you. This world is not supposed to agree with you. Everyone don't love you. Everyone ain't going to accept you. You're not going to fit in everywhere. You're not going to win a popularity contest. I don't care what Facebook says. It tells you you got 5,000 friends and you have reached your maximum. Now you got to become a digital creator and let everybody else follow you and all that. You don't have that many friends. Matter of fact, you can count on one hand probably how many true friends you have. There's a difference between a friend and a friend. But tucked right here in verse number 42, the Bible says, and the soldier's counsel was to what? Kill. Kill. In this life, when you meet the Savior, you create, or I should say there's some enemies created. When I first got saved way back when, you know, and uh, I had friends and this, that, and other. I thought everybody was going to be glad I wasn't struggling with alcohol no more. I thought everybody was going to be glad I wasn't doing drugs no more. I thought now we can still hunt together. We can still fish together. We can still work together. We can still do all these things together because, excuse me, now I'm not struggling with these things. But to only find out, Jody, that the moment I got saved, 
the moment I got birthed into the family of God, all them people I called friends, all them people I used to hunt with, all them people I'd go fishing with, all them people I'd work with, all them people I'd run around with in the, in the great little town. I said little town of Indian land down there when it was little, when it was Indian land, amen, not a metropolis in a, in a growing city and, hey, full of a uh, bunch of Yankees that wants to change everything, amen. You can't be from here if you're complaining, hey, like Pineville is about the sound of fireworks going off at Carowinds. You done lost your ever living mind. What that is a picture of is that there's going to be soldiers in your life that sent out to kill you and to come against you. But you know what? But because they was committed, there came up a council because you can't control the sea. You can't control the storm. But you got a Savior. And you know what happens when the soldiers rise up? Average child of God, that's when they sit down. Because when the soldier rises up, when the council begins to talk and the adversary begins to come against you all of a sudden we start listening to what they say we start not just listening we start believing just what they say we, we actually believe hey, that there's in America people don't love God no more we actually believe that in our country people don't want to worship God no more we actually believe that we don't have very many people but I come by to tell you that GL ain't the only little church on side the road that people that loves God this nation's got people hey from the east coast to the west coast that still love the Lord we're not hey we're not my friend going to be destroyed we're heaven bound with the hammer now but you want to know why the church has lost its shout the church has lost its want to the church has lost its courage mama's giving up daddy's giving up pastor's throwing in the towel the congregation's walking out the choir loft is empty it's because they've started believing the soldiers the soldiers but listen in Acts 27 in Acts 27 right here we found out the seasons happen it's hurricane season in Acts 27 we found out that Paul said it's not a good season it's not a good time to sail and we found out, just like in Acts 27, like it is in 2023, everybody don't listen to the man of God. People's going to go on and do their things anyway because, you see, we just got to. All right? We found out they got out there on the Mediterranean in a hurricane. You played it. Hey, it showed up. They was naming hurricanes back in like they're naming hurricanes now. Hey, it ain't, it ain't a, thing, a, a new thing. It's been happening for a long, long time. The storm came up. And no matter what happened, no matter what happened, that storm was coming. That storm hit that ship. And in that storm, it tore up that ship. It tore up that ship. Hey, you want to know what? Today in America, today in our churches, right now, we put emphasis on the storms. We put emphasis, hey, on the shipwreck. We put emphasis on the circumstances that surrounds us. We spend more time. Go with me now. Illustration. We'll spend more time watching the radar instead of looking for the one, hey, that's in control of everything. You understand what I'm saying? We spend more time looking at all of our circumstances instead of trusting the one. Hey, this in control of it. If you'll go back a few weeks ago, I told you you can't control the seas. You can't control the storms. You can't control the season. But there is a messenger, hey, in the storm. The master of the storm. Hey, they showed up and he brought a message. In that message that he brought, he said this, listen boys, the storms may rage. The soldiers' counsel may come against you. But I come by to tell you, I have met with a holy God for the angel of the Lord had stood by me this night and he said that not one of you not a hair of your head not one of you are going to perish in the storm everybody is going to be okay and the Bible tells us right here in Acts chapter number 27 the Bible says in the verse 43 and the centurion willing to say Paul kept them from their purpose can I say this right here before I go any further the soldiers may rise up and they may open up their mouth they may come out against you but you got a heavenly father that said a promise to you you're going to make it you're going to make it it may seem like we're cast down it may seem like we're falling down but my precious word of God said you may be cast down but you're not out happy day happy day it's not by your strength it's not by your merit it's not by what you've done what you accomplished it's all on the authority of Jesus Christ Amen. listen listen 
the Bible says, in the rest. So he, he commanded them that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. But everybody can't swim. It's my mama's 68th birthday today. She's 68 years old. She can't swim. So I guess she's out. First thing I said is, but listen, everybody ain't on the same spiritual level. And that's okay. But the only way to get on a spiritual level at all is by the blood of Jesus. We put emphasis on this and that and this and that and this and that. The truth of the matter is if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, the promises of God apply straight to you. Look what the Bible says. Cast them first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces. That ain't even a board. That's a piece of a board of the ship. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. It came to pass that they escaped. Say that next three-letter word. How many? All, All what? Safe. Safe to where? Safe to land. They all escaped safe to land. Is there anybody saved in here? So you mean to tell me that right now, in this moment, Lord help me, right now in this moment, if Christ was to step out, the trumpet was to sound, in your heart, there is not a question mark at all. I know that I know Jesus is my Savior. Good. If you don't know, oh man, I'd ask him right now. But it leads me up to my last point. You can't control the seasons. You can't control the storms. And the shipwrecks are going to happen. But the seasons and the storms in the shipwrecks does not change the fact of your destination. You see, look what the Bible says right there. It says, and it came to pass that they all escaped safe to land. Back over there in the verse number 39, and it when it was day, they knew not the land. They knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with the shore, with the shore. They knew not the land. They didn't know where they was at. They didn't know which way the wind was going to blow them. They had no idea where the storm was going to take them. And when the ship run aground and devastation hit their life, they had no idea. They had no idea what was going to happen. And then the next command comes. You you better swim. You better jump, grab your board, get you a piece of it, and you better get safely. And the Bible says this. Here it is. They all made it safe to land. You can't control the season. You can't control the storms. You cannot get nothing by the shipwreck. But there is a shore on the other side. You may not see it now. You may not understand it now. But you got a promise from the Word of God that you're going to make it home to the shores of heaven. Hey, let the winds blow let the storms come but on the other side on the other side on the other side there is a shore of a place called heaven the Bible says let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house or many benches if it were not so I would have told you behold I go to prepare a place for you and if I go I will come again and receive you unto myself child of God you need to wipe that from off your face. You need to pick up your list. Get back on your feet. The storm clouds may come. It may rock your world, but you got a promise. There's a shore of heaven waiting on the other side for you. Look what the Bible says about that place called heaven over in the scriptures in Revelation. Chapter number 21. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it, but the Lamb is the light thereof. And the 
foundations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the Bible says and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there that means the storm's gone it's over my friend there ain't no night there there ain't no clouds there there ain't no trouble waters there ain't no season there ain't no storms there ain't no shipwreck but look what the Bible says and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it and there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie what's there but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life what's that mean child of God you're going to make it you're going to make it safe to the shore it's just inside you can't see it for the clouds you can't see it for the boisterous water you can't see it for the violent storm but I promise you on the authority of the book there is a shore there's a shore waiting on you so I ask you this morning in this sea of life for a minute Forget about the season. Forget about the storm. The shipwrecks, they're going to happen. Is there anybody in here that has not experienced a season in their life? Is there anybody that's never experienced a storm in their life? Is there anybody that not has some type of devastation or shipwreck in their life? Everybody's experienced it. But is there anybody that's experienced a Savior in their life? A Savior. An angel of God who stood by me this night and made a promise. Made a promise. And in that promise, that everybody's going to be okay. It didn't calm the storm. The promise did not bring the sunlight. The promise didn't cause the white caps to lay down. The promise didn't cause the wind to stop blowing. Matter of fact, you keep reading from the time that Paul told him about what the angel of God had told him. You'll find out things got more hectic. Got more devastated. But it don't change the fact of the promise that there's a shore. And I stopped by this morning for a few minutes on... Freedom Weekend, celebrating 247 years ago when our country was officially birthed. And it was all started. You believe what you want to believe. I don't make, I'm not going to argue with you about it. But I'll go to my grave believing that this country is where it's at because of this precious book right here. Hey, you know what? Years ago, it was hard. Hey, you know what? But they had a promise and they stayed the course. They stayed, of course, Hebrews chapter number 11 talks about all those by faith, by faith, by faith. And then it goes on over there, tucked on the middle of that chapter. It talks about there was some that cling to the promise that never seen the city. Cling to the promise but never made it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But you know what I'm telling you? In 2023, I know it's dark outside. I know it's getting hard for you outside. But you know what? I come to tell you, it don't change the fact. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care what nobody says. If you do a U-turn at the Audra Kale red light and travel a half a mile, whether you like it or don't like it, half a mile later, you're going to cross something. It's called the state line. And regardless of how you feel about South Carolina and all their potholes, it don't make no difference that once you cross that line, you're there. You're there. Listen to me in closing. In this life you're on, this journey of life is taking you some places that you don't like. It's bringing some things in your life you experience you ain't always going to understand. That's why God gave us a book called the Bible. It's got promises in there. And Miss Rhonda, no matter how you're feeling, how rough it gets, 
It ain't going to change the fact, you know, cancer brings devastation. Cancer can rock your world, change your whole life. But there's something that cancer won't ever, ever accomplish in Rhonda Buckner's life. That there is a day beyond the blue. And one day when that trumpet sounds, oh, God takes you before it. You're going to a place called heaven. And you know what? Every storm is going to cease. Every shipwreck's going to be over. Every burden's going to be let go. There'll be no fiery furnaces. There'll be no valleys to walk through. There'll be no troubles and trials. There'll be no mind games. Why? Because you will make it safely to the shore. Not because the preacher said it. Not because you battled through the cancer. Because the promises of God told you that, Rhonda, there is a shore waiting on you. And one day when you get there, you'll leave it all behind. But the good news is this. That promise just ain't for Rhonda. That promise is for you. That promise is for you. One day you're going to get over there and you're going to see him again. Hey, it ain't going to be long, buddy. Hey, you're going to see Papa again. Yeah. He just made it to the shore a little sooner than you did. But it don't change the fact that the same thing that took daddy, the same thing that carried daddy, the same thing that sealed daddy, is the same thing that's in your heart. The same promise is your promise, my promise, God's people's promise. We got a shore that's waiting on us. So, child of God, don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Heaven is just inside. Heaven. It's just in sight. Yep. The perfect will of God will carry you to places that you don't want to go. Yes, the perfect will of God will bring experiences into your life that you didn't ask for or like. And yes, there'll be places in your life you can't explain and you don't understand. But also in Acts 27... There was a place that they made it to. They didn't make it, listen, because they could swim. They didn't make it because they floated on a board. They didn't make it because of broken pieces. Though I believe that's the way they all had a part on that. The application to you and I this morning is, they made it because of a promise from God. And that same promise that was given to them is a promise that you have. Child of God, America ain't what she ought to be. Matter of fact, reality, being as transparent as I know how, the possibility of her getting wickeder, viler, is very much possible. But no matter how wicked, no matter how vile it gets, Tim's going to cling to the promise that there is a shore place called heaven that I'm going to that when I get there I'll need no Bible I'll need no candlestick I'll need no light for the Son of God is the light thereof and you know what in all the who goes preacher all those who are written in the Lamb's book of life how can I know that my name is recorded in the Lamb's book of life and I have a promise that there's a shore that's waiting on me, a place called heaven. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You mean, preacher, all I got to do is call on him, he'll save me? Well, yes. But the Father has to draw you. You see, before you can ever make it to that shore, you got to be lost before you can ever be saved. A life jacket on a boat is never used. It's a saver, but it's never used if somebody's life is in jeopardy. Salvation is a saver, but you can't exercise salvation until first you see your need, the condition of needing a saver. So we can shout about the shores, we can shout about heaven. The truth of the matter is, the only folks that's going is those that's been washed in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That we can walk through life and let the storm sails run up the sail, commit ourselves to the sea, and say, Lord, let life take me wherever 
you want to take me because I'm clinging to a promise that one day heaven is going to be my home. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I wonder in the sanctuary this morning as we're getting ready to enter in our time of invitation. What is invitation, preacher? It's a time that we allow you to respond to what you've heard today. Respond to the singing, respond to the preaching. Child of God, you're searching your heart. A lot of you hollered a while ago that you were saved on your way to heaven. You got shipwrecks, you got storms, you got things going on. This morning you need to identify with that promise of the shore. It's just in sight. It's going to be okay. You hear me? Trust them. It's going to be okay. Preacher, it's dark. I don't know if I can trust them all. You can trust them. He's always been faithful and true. He won't leave you now. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. But I wonder this morning why the Christian has got their head bowed and eyes are closed. But I wonder if there's somebody this morning that says, honestly, Pastor, I'm not 100% confident in my soul that if, if I was to meet eternity right now, I'm not sure that I would go to heaven. And preacher, I don't want you to point me out. I don't want you to single me out. And I don't want you to come to me. But preacher, I want you to pray for me this morning that I sure would like to know that there's a shore waiting on me. So, preacher, I'm lifting my head and I'm making eye contact with you to ask you to pray for me that before it's eternally too late, I'll meet Jesus. Is there anybody like that at all? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Preacher, pray for me. I don't know if I've ever trusted Christ as my Savior. Anybody at all? So, Based on your testimony this morning, everybody under the sound of my voice has consciously made a decision and publicly told me that, preacher, I know that Jesus is my Savior. Can I ask you, child of God, where's your smile? Where's your shout? Where's your worship? Why are you carrying that? Why do you walk around looking like you're the utmost miserable person? If you've had the angel of God stand by you this evening in the dark, stormy times of your life and made a promise, and you say you're clinging to the promises of God's Word, I ask you, why are you still carrying what you're carrying? This is what we're going to do this morning. We're all going to stand to our feet all around the sanctuary. We're going to keep our heads bowed, our eyes are closed. I'm going to pray. They got a song of invitation. And I want to invite you, child of God. I want you to come and bring that storm, bring that season, bring that shipwreck to the Savior. And cling to the promise of the day you're going to step foot on that shore. We learned today in our class, our discipleship class, if you have not, because you ask not, seek and ye shall find. Come tell your Father. All this troubling you. And let the Father do for you what only the Father can do for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I ask you, God, Lord, to help these people. Help your children. In Jesus' name. Will you come? I will stand will you come? on the bank of the river. Come on, come on. Looking You're no match to the storm. I'm sorry, ma'am, as strong as you think you are, you can't bear it by yourself. Sir, come cling to the promise of the shore. Is it well with your soul this morning? Uh
Ain't going to be long, child of God. He was the captain. Well, I could hear. Ain't going to be long. You're going to pull into that port. The place called heaven. Get on board. Oh, yes. We're going to be leaving. The old ship of Zion. It may never. Oh, think about it. Yes. Going to heaven. Leaving it all behind. There goes the storm. There goes the shipwreck. There goes the seasons. Losing the burdens. The captain. Oh, yes. Sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Father, we bow our heads, God, thanking you that one day we're going to leave this place. One day we're going to step over on the other side. God, we'll be able to look at the Lamb of God, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. We'll be able to look at Him. And God, Lord, all of that is behind us. We'll say it's been well worth every mile. It's been worth every trial. It's been worth every trouble. When we behold the place, the face of Jesus, when we make it safely to the shore, God, we're grateful and thankful for the promises of God and all that you are in our hearts and our lives. Can God's people give the Lord some praise this morning? There is coming a day with no heartache shall come no more clouds in the sky no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. There sing and what a day that will be with my Jesus I shall see when I look Just for a moment, I'll give you a couple of just a quick announcements, and then we'll uh, we'll go. Uh, don't forget, ladies, all you ladies that are here today, we've got a ladies meeting that is tomorrow night inside the sanctuary here at 6:30. Uh, if you have never come to a ladies meeting on Monday night, I would love for you to come tomorrow night, and 
It'll be a wonderful time. They'll eat together, and then they'll study the Word of God together, and it's just a great time. So I would love to invite all you, all you girls, all you ladies that are here today, uh, come back. To, excuse me, tomorrow night at six thirty, and uh, you'll have a really good time uh, together. Also, with that is uh, the ladies are going to be celebrating Miss Laura Allman uh, and Mr. Justin Allman's. Uh, is this y'all's third baby? This is their third baby. Y'all, y'all can, y'all gonna have four. Yeah. Many as you can, pray. You're a brave man, braver than I am. Praise God. All right. Well, they need extra gifts in because somebody, somebody say amen right there. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow night, ladies, I'm, uh, here's what we're doing is tomorrow night we're going to have a table set up inside here. We'd love, we're going to kind of have a, a, a baby shower as well as a ladies meeting. So I'd love for all you ladies, if you would, uh, bring something from Miss Laura. You can scan that code on the screen. And uh, she's got a registry, so if you'd like to know what to bring her, just scan that code. It'll be rotating out even after service, or you could ask her today uh, what she needs. If all else fails, bring her money. Somebody say amen right there. And uh, so y'all have a good time together doing that. It'll be a really good time in the Lord. And then uh, also tonight uh, at 5 o'clock, this is really important. Tonight at 5 o'clock, we're going to have family food fellowship. We're going to all go outside. Uh, we'll be uh, under, the, under the tents eating together. We're, we're going to cook out a little while, eat some watermelon, cook out. Uh, and play kickball and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to play kickball if you come. Some of you all have been visiting and you're not a part, per se, a member, have not joined yet. But I'd love for you to come, hang out with us. And let me just put it like this. The best way you're going to get to know us is watch us play kickball together. Somebody say amen right there. All right? And that will be a sign of if you want to come back or not. All right? You may like the choir, like the preaching, like the singing, but you may not like kickball. Somebody say amen right there. So uh, we'd love for all of you to come back. We'll have enough food for every one of you. And... Uh, Come back, have a good time, spend some time with us this evening. That'll be at 5 o'clock. We're going to try and wait a little later in the day, hopefully. Uh, the weather will go, will cool off just a little bit. The bounce houses will be up for the kids, so it'll be a really good time. We'll tell, celebrate the fact that we're free and uh, enjoy that uh, together. So don't forget, that's tonight at 5 o'clock. We will not be having an ordinary service. We'll be meeting out in the field doing that together. Uh, just because you come don't mean you have to play kickball. Come and you can laugh at the rest of us playing, okay? Uh, also, one more thing I need to tell you is, uh, or a couple more things, next Sunday Next Sunday, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, there will only be one service, okay? There will only be 11 o'clock service. There will not be Sunday school. There will not be 930 prayer. There will not be a 5 p.m. service. There will only be one service next Sunday, and that's 11 o'clock, sir? Yeah, this coming Sunday. So, like, not today, obviously, but this coming Sunday, right? So, like, a week from today. Everybody got that? Is that next Sunday or is that this Sunday? Next Sunday? All right, I didn't know. However you want to put that, it's, the, it's, the, it's not today. It's the next one, right? All right, so the next one that says Sunday, yeah, right, uh, it's 11 o'clock, all right? Say it again. July the 9th. There we go. That's what you, July the 9th is one service at 11 o'clock. The reason that is is because we're going to have, a, we've got about 60 folk or so that's going, getting on a bus on Saturday, traveling to Oklahoma, and so everything's going to be a little different here next week. So if you're not going to Oklahoma, I need somebody to preach to, so you better be here next Sunday. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, but everybody else is going to be going to Oklahoma, so we'll we'll have one service at 11 o'clock next week. And uh, and so you come and be a part of that. Uh, and then also one more thing is Miss Beatrice is here today, and uh, she wanted me to tell all you how thankful she was for all your cards and calling her, checking on her during the loss of her family. And uh, she wanted me to let you know how much she loved you, appreciated you, and thank you for caring uh, about her. She wanted me to tell you that today. Yeah, yeah, she wanted to say thank you, and so I wanted you to hear that as well. All right, uh, don't forget the eternal investment offering is July 23rd. Don't forget that. And then Oklahoma, if you are going to Oklahoma today, I need to see you as soon as, as, soon as we say amen, just a minute up front. We'll have a meeting, and then we'll go eat lunch together, sir. And the trustees meeting will be right after the Oklahoma meeting, all right? We're busy around here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we just know the summer ain't even really getting some. We ain't even got a pumpkin patch yet, y'all. Amen. But it's a, it's a good time. Well, we love you. I'm thankful. Look at you. Look at your person beside you and say, I'm glad I was at church with you today. Yeah. Now look at the other person beside you and say, I'll see you at 5 o'clock. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be lying in church, y'all. You know what I'm trying to tell you? The, la the last person that lied in church got drug out by their feet. Somebody say amen right there. How many know your Bible? I'll see you at 5 o'clock. I love you. God loves you. Thank you for being here today. You are dismissed. You have a wonderful day.